him to use. I can only imagine what you must be going through right now. The mental and spiritual devastation that you are suffering. As you did in Ukraine, as you are going through now in Israel. You see the pattern, don't you? You know who's next? This United States. That's right. Let this be a message to every colonizer. You have every reason to be afraid. And you white South Africans who thought that you could get away with your crimes too, pay close attention. As more and more people around this country get a little bit more hands-on against your shenanigans. Scott supporting gun rights. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about Hezbollah in the United States. The cops, we've been warning about this for, I want to say, at least 20 years. Uh, right after 2001, all of us knew that Hezbollah sleeper cells were in the United States, and we were told some specific information. Still carries over to today. We're going to talk to you about it today. We're going to give you some proof because the mainstream media is saying it's not occurring, that it's a right-wing conspiracy, that this stuff really isn't happening. We are going to list out exactly the proof that you need to show what's going on. We're going to speak with authority. We're going to talk about tips. Of we don't spam or sell our news lists. All right, let's get into it. So the issue with Hezbollah is not just in Israel, Lebanon, Israel, Hamas, Israel, West Bank, Gaza Strip. It's not their issue. It's our issue as well because Moss and Hezbollah both have a presence in the United States. It's important to note that our community is not safe because of these people being here. Our border is wide open. They are coming across. Just ask any Border Patrol agent that you come across. If they get to know you a little bit, they'll tell you the truth and the special interest aliens that they're interdicting. We'll talk more about that. All right. It's important for you because we are giving that because we are given that Second Amendment right to have a gun to protect ourselves. You can see I'm surrounded by guns. I think it's important for you right now to carry. At the end, I always say, remember your ABCs, always be carrying. Look, I got that from Matt. Matt's. Next. Let's go over some talking points that are pretty important, all right? Back in 2010, a guy named Jamil Nasser was arrested in Tijuana, Mexico. He was tasked with establishing a Hezbollah network in Mexico and South America. Hezbollah is there. Every week, I put out a narco news bulletin for narcotics officers. In that bulletin, I put out information about car bombs that go off quite frequently. Those car bombs weren't around until Hezbollah started showing up in Mexico and working with the drug, drug cartels. Originally, they first started working with Las Edas, which is a very, was a very violent cartel at the time. They're now in different places now. But when Hezbollah showed up, they started showing them tunneling. How to, That's how a lot of the tunnels going from Tijuana into the United States came from Hezbollah because they are the tunnel masters. They also helped them with developing car bombs. Mexico has a lot of car bombs going off, killing a lot of people. People don't realize that because the mainstream media doesn't put it out. If you watch the Mexican media, which I do, you'll see a lot of those car bombs coming out. So when Jamil Nasser was arrested in Tijuana in 2010, it uncovered and solidified and showed, yes, Hezbollah is indeed in Mexico, all right, on our border. Jamal Youssef was arrested in New York in 2009. Now, when he was arrested in 2009, it exposed a significant case that involved him in possession of AR-15s, M-16s, which hopefully the, our followers know the difference between an AR and an M-16, grenades, explosives, including anti-tank guided missiles. They came from Iraq into Mexico, across the border to New York, where he was arrested. And Jamal Youssef said that he was there to establish a network for Hezbollah in the United States. Okay, so that's the proof. Those are those are the arrests that we know of that were linked to Hezbollah. In the early 2000s, American law enforcement was notified by the feds that Hezbollah did have networks in the United States. They had sleeper cells. What's a sleeper cell? It is a group that comes into the United States legally or, Ill legally or illegally. Most of the time it's illegal. And they establish a base of operations and they are there for when Iran gets upset with America and they want to create chaos, they activate them and then they wreak mayhem across and then they wreak mayhem across the United States. What we were told back then was that they were more than likely going to start doing active shooter incidents 
So as an example, they would go to one city and just inundate active shooters all over the city so the cops couldn't control it all and then move on and then go to the next city then go to the next city, then go to the next city. Think about the mayhem that would occur from that. People would stop. Mr. Farah, the evidence that links the Sinaloa cartel and Hezbollah has been well documented by the DOJ through arrests and indictments and the relationship between the two organizations has fueled instability between Latin America and the Middle East for the last decade. Can you describe that relationship to us today? The Mexican cartels and, and Hezbollah have primarily a financial relationship that allows them to move uh, money to designated terrorist organizations in the Middle East in exchange for access to ports and the import of, uh, of illegal products or smuggled products or products that don't, uh, counterfeit products into the into our hemisphere. I think my work is primarily focused on the tri-border area of Paraguay, Argentina, in Brazil, where you see this uh, network of now PCC, which is the main gang, with Hezbollah operatives and with Colombian and Mexican drug cartels, moving into ever-expanding circles of collaboration, not out of ideology or religious or religion, but simply out for the ability to profit. And when I talked about the new groups that are emerging in the hemisphere, is this type of new special uh, specialization that comes in, this ability of Hezbollah to provide new things that the cartels didn't have before access to, new methodologies, etc. So no podemos ignorar lo que está pasando en nuestra propia casa. Estos tres atentados terroristas tienen algo en común. Fueron planeados por Hezbollah. Hezbollah, que significa Partido de Dios en Árabe, es una organización terrorista reconocida internacionalmente cuya base es en el Líbano. Su principal objetivo, destruir a Israel. Irán financia Hezbollah con aproximadamente 700 millones de dólares al año. En el exterior, pareciera que la mayoría de las actividades de Hezbollah ocurren en el Líbano, Siria e Israel al otro lado del mundo. Pero realmente, Hezbollah está convirtiendo a Latinoamérica en un nuevo centro de terrorismo. Por ejemplo, la triple frontera. Tras la detención de varios contrabandistas en la ciudad fronteriza de Foz de Iguazú, el Hezbollah está infiltrándose en diferentes países de la región. La presencia de redes vinculadas a grupos terroristas. Allegations that some Latin American drug trafficking organizations are linked with Hezbollah and Iran. La triple frontera es el eje de la inserción. The president put out a written statement yesterday uh, with multiple elements to it. One of those elements was about the focus that we have right now on protecting Americans here at home against anyone who would seek to exploit or piggyback on what has uh, unfolded, these gruesome events that have unfolded in Israel. Uh, part of that is about protecting places of worship, synagogues, and ensuring that we don't see a kind of virulent form of anti-Semitism sparked by what has just happened. And then part of that is about ensuring that any terrorist threat here in the United States or to the United States or to Americans uh, anywhere in the world, that we are at a heightened state of vigilance to deal with that. Uh, that's something the president directed his team. It's something he spoke to yesterday in that statement. And it's something that he will be convening his national security team on this week because it remains a very high priority. Alarming accusations tonight about six Americans arrested while allegedly trying to join terror groups in Syria. Senior political reporter Scott Thuman joins us live from our Capitol Hill Bureau with what's different about this recent case. Scott? Well, Maureen, uh, according to these charging documents here, we're talking about a group of young men all from Minnesota. There is a high Somali American population there, and the recruiting is effective enough that we are getting a scary admission from law enforcement tonight. We have a terror recruiting problem in Minnesota. More fears in middle America over young men leaving the country and taking up arms along the terror group ISIL. 
Arrests of four of the friends came in Minnesota and two who'd made it to California, where they allegedly went to pick up fake passports with plans of flying overseas from Mexico in order to evade U.S. authorities. They were not confused young men. They were not easily influenced. These are focused men who were intent on joining a terrorist organization. According to the 31-page charging document, the suspects praised terrorists on their Facebook pages, and one tweeted, the American identity is dead. Even if I get caught, I'm through with America. Burn my ID. As is often the case, prosecutors allege they were recruited, much of it online. On Capitol Hill, a concern over how to minimize that reach. Well, I think it's... To the war in the Middle East as President Biden pledges his support for Israel and warns its adversaries not to take advantage after a surprise attack by Hamas over the weekend. The U.S. is also ramping up security after the attacks. ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers and ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Kuturski join me now for more. Karen, an NSC official says at least nine Americans were killed in Israel. What do we know about that? Diane, we don't know more details about who those nine Americans are and how and where they were killed. But administration officials are warning that that number could rise as more is discovered. Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer was on ABC's Good Morning America this morning and said that they're doing everything they can to support those families and be in touch with them and get them what they need during this difficult time. Another thing that they're very closely watching right now is whether any Americans had been kidnapped and taken into Gaza. John Finer did not have details on that, but said it's something they're watching very closely. Aaron, what are law enforcement officials saying in terms of concerns about attacks here? They're really concerned. Uh, law enforcement officials immediately after the, the, the war began and the attacks unfolded started deploying police officers to sensitive locations, synagogues and mosques, government and cultural institutions from uh, both the Israeli and Palestinian sides that are in the United States and other sites that could be considered uh, potential targets. I was out this morning at the Israeli consulate. Two uh, police officers, marked pa uh, patrol cars, were, were sitting right there in front of it because these will be places where protesters could gather, but they could also be places where uh, people would do harm. And there's a fear of lone actors trying to take inspiration from what they see is going on overseas, but also organized groups maybe also looking to capitalize. And, and Karen, the administration... Shalom, shalom, Israel, coming back at you with another lesson. Lord willing, this is edifying. First off, giving all praise, all honor, all glories to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and all the teachers out there pushing this word in truth, with truth and sincerity, especially now, risk your lives to do so. May you be of the elect. Shalom to all the Akim and the Akwath out there listening and learning. You Israelites, so called Negroes, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indians, who are the true children of Israel as well as you speckled bird, Israelite foreigners, the Israelites that look like, act like, and take on the customs of all these heathen nations. So to you, I say Shalom. This lesson is brought to you by the Spirit and the power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the true name of our Father, the God of the Bible, the God of the Israelites, by Hashem meaning in the name, and Yahweh Shai being the only begotten Son of Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls by the name of JC. All right? So the name of this lesson, you can saw from the... the little bits of the clips that I found and, uh, you know, comprise them all together. All right. So it says the domino effect of immigrant influx will inspire chaos. Right. And how would that be? Right. You're going to have resources being used up because you have this influx of, of immigrants. Right. So therefore, uh, more space is going to be taken up. Right. To house these immigrants. Uh, you know, you got to care for them. You have to put a, a roof over their head. So there's, there's, um, you know, gas, electricity, all right, F um, food, okay, uh, clothing, all right. So there's a whole lot of uh, resources that are going to be used up with this, with this, uh, you know, the surge of uh, immigrants, all right. What else is it going to cause? It's going to cause job losses, all right. You're going to have uh, people that either get upset. By this in the this increase of um the immigrants, right? They'll they'll probably leave their job. You may have people just leaving their job because the immigrants are so flooded in the cities, right? Like they did in the, some of these uh, police departments, right? Sleeping inside of police departments, the stench, all right, from the, the bodily odors from not bathing, all right. So people are just gonna leave, 
You're also going to have, uh, because it's going to be so many people, all right, eventually people are going to start robbing each other, start robbing stores, all right, job losses right there, okay, security breaches, shit, it's already been said, you know, that, uh, you know, with this influx of uh, immigrants, um, that uh, there was like 150 uh, uh, ter- uh, people that are on the terrorist, the terrorist list, all <laughs> right? So, and just think, that's just a, a small group with how many people that have already come in, you know? Millions, millions of people have, have, have already come inside the United States, uh, being of um, Venezuelans, uh, Mexicans, uh, Chinese, Russians, okay? You got all these people coming from all over the place, and that's just a small group that I named. There's, there's people coming from all over, all right? So that that can increase the security breaches because you don't know what's coming in and what's going out. When you have uh when you have such an influx like that, you it's hard to keep track because everything at once upon a time was was monitored. All right. That's why they had the cameras up on every street corner. You got uh cameras before you go into a store, you got cameras outside of a store, you know, uh because of the, the increase of, of of crime that's been happening because of the influx of people. All right. Uh, what else? You know, we mentioned food shortage, the rioting. All right. People are just going to get tired and get fed up about all this. OK. Again, the looting, of course, violence, all that stirs up violence. All right. And you got to remember, some of these immigrants are used to violence where they're from. They're used to violence. That's, the, that's a regular thing for them. Stepping over bodies. All right. Seeing people get get blasted right in front of them. You know, it's a normal thing for them. So what is it for them to even band together and say, you know what, government is not working fast enough. We need a place to stay. Winter time is right around the corner. I got a family to feed. Hey, let's all band together. Let's let's do something about this. Okay. You, again, you you'll have sedition, sedition among men. Okay, civil war. All right, you're gonna have civil unrest. You're gonna have people just tired of this shit, man. It's, the immigrants get, are going to be tired of uh, the, the fact that the government promised them this and promised them that, not making do on their promise because they, they were in the, under the enchantment of, of America with their lies. All right. And then you have the Americans, you know, they're going to be uh, upset with all this immigrant uh, uh, influx. They're going to be upset with the with the government. They're going to be upset that, you know, wh- why, why are the government giving them jobs and giving them free this and free that? And we got to work hard for this and work hard for that and... We're struggling, you know. You should always take care of your home, your homeland first before you start helping other people. People are gonna get tired up. They're gonna get tired, man. Okay, so again, sedition and civil war. What else is that? All this whole thing was about terrorism. All right, look what just recently happened with with Gaza. All right, uh, Israel. Okay, they're at war. This is the this is the war war three. It's 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 it's, it's constantly been. It's like the what third year that's been pretty much going on, but it's little but surely, all right. This is all ushering in for the great battle, all right. The Valley of Jehoshaphat, all right. The Lord's gonna get all these military personnel uh, together, man. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do a great work, man. All right. So what else uh, with all the terrorism, fascism, all right? A one world government. That's what they've been doing. That's what they've been planning forever. A new world order, okay. Uh, 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 look at your back of a, a U.S. dollar bill. New world order, seclorum. New world order, all right. They're trying to create their enterprise. Well, they got to do it by by chaos, man. They create order through chaos. They create problems, and they create a solution. Then they go ahead and, and, and set it to uh to example, man. You know, they they exercise it. You know. Again, what is that all? All that leads to economy collapse. All right, economy collapse goes into chaos, chaos. All right, of uh, you name it, <laughs> whatever you could think of that's related to chaos, you know, you name it. That's what's going to be. All right, that also is going to help uh, create and come into martial law. All right, internment camps, FEMA camps. All right, you are you you going to be uh. uh monitored you know how much food you can eat how much you can drink where you can work what time you have to be back indoors uh restricted areas you know 
And this is all going to be monitored. All these things right now are happening for a reason, man. All right. Well, let's get a couple of scriptures speaking on uh, all these uh, points that I just mentioned and use scripture. All right. Let's grab a. Uh... This is uh, the book of Isaiah. This is Isaiah 19. And I'll start at verse 1. All right. The burden of Egypt. It says, The burden of Egypt. Behold, Yahweh rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Because when the Lord comes back, man, he's coming back. With great vengeance, man. He's coming back with the with the armada of what the world calls UFOs. He's coming with the chariots, man. He's gonna set this place to right. All right. Verse two it says, And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Again, that's that civil war. You're gonna have uh, Americans fighting against Americans. You're gonna have kingdoms fighting against other kingdoms, nations against nations. Okay? It says, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom and the spirit of egypt shall fail in the midst of thereof and i will destroy the counsel thereof and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards and the egyptians will i give over into the hand of a cruel lord and a fierce king shall rule over them saith yahweh uh the power of hosts all right lord's got he's got a great work in place man all right, these people have no clue what's coming, but the men of the Lord, hey, we constantly go out there every week, man, every day prophesying, telling y'all what's going on. Any other of these uh, so called gods and goddesses of all these other nations, when they go out there and talk about something, has it ever happened? No, all right, but when the prophets have gone out there and, and mentioned these things, has it happened? You damn right. All right, Jeremiah 28 and 8, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. Every time the prophets have been brought out there, all right, things always happen, all right, because the Lord gave this information to his men. Show the Lord, the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. The prophets are the only ones given this word to go out there and warn y'all. All right, because that's our job as, as men of the Lord, as prophets, to warn the people. All right, either for judgment or, or for uh, to let y'all know what y'all need to do to get salvation. OK, but y'all don't listen. <laughs> all right. And, and it's, it's all right. Everybody's got their part. You know, everybody's got their part. We're just glad that the Lord allowed us to be spokesmen for him. All right. This is second Ezra. Um. 15 and i'm gonna start at verse 14 all right and it reads woe to the world and them that dwell therein all right destruction to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh it's gonna be a, it's gonna be fucking hell man all kinds of uh things that can hurt maim kill all right and their destruction draw nigh death is right around the corner all right and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands. Anything that can, can hurt, maim, or kill. Okay? For there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another. Right? You got this influx right now. Alright? But that's also going to go into uh, people uh, going upside of your, in your, in your home. Alright? Invading your privacy. Alright? Invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. They're not going to care about the government. They're not going to care about uh, military personnel. They're not going to care about police officers. All right. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power because they, they, it's going to be fuck, like a frenzy, man. All right. It's going to be more uh, more of the, the so-called bad guys than the good guys. All right. More bad guys than first responders than government officials. Okay. Verse 17, a man shall desire to go into a city. And should not be able. You're gonna again. That's going with that that martial law internment camps, all right? Restrictions on things, all right. For because of the pride, because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Again, it's gonna be all hell on earth, 
A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Okay? All these things have to come to pass. All right? All these things are going to happen, man. All right? If you haven't watched the movie The Road or um, The Book of Eli, all right, you should because that's going to give you a, 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 a clear picture of uh, an idea and understanding as to the scripture that I have just read. All right. Uh, let's get uh, real quick. Real quick. This is Revelation. This is Revelation 6. And. This is Revelation 6 and verse. Eight, all right. It says, "This is about the fourth, the fourth seal being opened." Verse eight. It says, "And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him." All right, and that's what that's that going into that scripture while I was just reading. All right, in Second Ezra. All right, uh, let's get to. This is the book of Mark. Mark. 13 and starting at verse 7. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. All right, it says, And when ye shall hear of wars um, and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. All right, you're gonna, because we already been seeing all these things coming for a few years already. Obviously, the, the end hasn't been just yet, because there's, there's still some things that's got to happen. All right, before the Lord comes back and start jacking this place around, man. <clears throat> All right. Uh, verse 8, it says, For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And we're seeing that already. We're seeing that with Russia. We're seeing that with Ukraine. Uh, we're seeing that now with Israel and uh, the Palestinians. All right. And now uh, even America has gone over there, sticking in those in people's business as they always done. All right. <laughs> Not knowing that they are seen as small amongst the heathen right now. People don't like America for all the shit that's been going on. But nonetheless, right? It says, um, again, verse 8, Mark 13 and 8. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. We've been seeing and hearing a whole lot about that. And there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. These are the beginning of the sorrows that are coming. All right? Meaning we haven't seen shit yet. It seems so chaotic uh, for the people that are on the outside of being a man of the Lord. It seems so chaotic. But believe us, you haven't seen shit yet. We haven't even seen shit yet. All right. The scripture says it's going to be like a time like never has been before, nor ever shall be. All right. <laughs> we ain't seen nothing yet. So, hey, look, and, and let this be a lesson to all you, you, you so-called women that have left your man of the Lord. You see how the shit happened now? Wait till the shit really hits the fan. And you without your, your covering. Without your hedge. This is uh, Mark 5 and 11. And this is red letter. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. All right, it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The reason why I brought that out. <clears throat> matter of fact, that's inspiring for a, 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 another lesson. Uh, the reason why I brought that out, all right, because, again, this whole thing right now is about, um, you know, the war on Israel. Well, people are already uh, 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 looking to, to blame the men of the Lord, all right, the real men of the Lord, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indians. Why? Because we go out there and prophesy, and we've been prophesying, bringing this place down, and it's been happening. So, and so right now, the, the whole situation is, you know, you know, Palestine and whatnot, they have an issue with the Israelis, right? They're not Israelites, they're Israelis. The people in Israel, they're, they're going back and forth to war. But you heard that video in the beginning. The guy said, who's next? All right, talking about the, the uh, Israel, Israelis in America. Well, most people... Now, right, if they haven't heard it already, they know the men of the Lord are the Israelites. So, but what is the government going to do about that? They got to keep up, they got to keep up with their lies, right? They got to keep up with their corruption. So what are they going to do? They're going to, they're going to start persecuting the real men of the Lord. 
All right, they, they, we're going to be the ones hated. Hey, but hey, that's all part of it too, man. That's all part of the walk. We we understood that cost. Lord willing, he keep that spirit on us to uh, hold ten toes down, man, for y'all watching y'all shy. You know, but that's going to be part of it. This is all part of uh, of the things that are to come. All right. So hey, that's all I have for this, man. Lord willing, this is edifying, giving all praise, all honor, all glories to Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And all the teachers out there pushing this word in truth, with truth and sincerity, especially in our risk of your lives to do so. May you be of the elect. Stay prayed up, repent. All right. A Baba Ball, a Baba Ball, a Baba Ball. Shalom.